Right, good afternoon everybody. Thanks for joining us today. For any of you that don't know me, I'm Megan Twentyman, the BDM for Unified Communications here at Blue Chip. Purpose of today's webinar is to look at the latest updates with 3CX. Um, we will stick to our bite-sized format and we will have a Q&A at the end. You're welcome to throw questions in the Q&A box as we go along, but I won't be addressing those until we get to the end of the webinar. So on the webinar with me today, you'll see a new face. I have got a cell um, on. It is, I think, week six or week seven for a cell here at Blue Chip. He's joined us as our new sales engineer for UC. Awesome, guys. Great to be here and look forward to catching up with you guys in uh, the coming weeks. Awesome. Thanks, Sal. So we'll crack into the webinar. As I said, don't hesitate to throw in your Q&A as we go along. So agenda for today's webinar is obviously an update about version 20s. For any eagle eyes, you will see that it actually launched overnight officially. Um, so we've been waiting since September and we've officially launched. So I will cover some of that off, but I have not changed the format of today's webinar because obviously that came through overnight. Um, and a lot of the information is what I was going to cover today anyway. I'm also going to give you an update on the 3CX standard for simultaneous call free licenses, which are end of life, along with the perpetual licenses, which are end of life, um, how to keep up to date with us, and then, as I said, we'll wrap that Q&A. So we'll zoom along and see how we go. So what's next for 3cx they have literally just launched version 20 overnight so most of you have been on this journey with me since september where we have been seeing the new improvements coming out and being testing in the beta and release candidate stages so just to think back in time over 15 years ago it's almost 20 years since 3cx burst onto the scene um, it was designed for an on-prem deployment on windows platform Everyone still had a fax machine, um, and there weren't even a lot of SIP trunks around. It was just a phone system. If we fast forward to today, most instances are deployed in the cloud and on Linux. So it's a massive change. And also, lots of technology has changed and evolved um, very, very rapidly. 3CX have stayed at the forefront, being able to integrate with those systems. You know, they've brought out things like they're hosted by 3CX for cloud deployments, which is now digital ocean for the ANZ region. For anybody that started with um, hosted by 3CX when it first came out, it was Volta. Um, but it has moved to DigitalOcean. Um, you need an SBC, obviously, to be able to have your IP phones connecting to your cloud instance. Um, but where are we going with version 20? So version 20 is a re-architect from the ground up product. It is designed for today and the future, and it's designed to be flexible. So it's got rid of a lot of hard coding that had been built on for many years, um, which is how software was developed back then. It was just normal, um, but we have moved on. So it's really future-proofed for what is gonna come out that we've never even heard of yet. It is a very exciting time to be involved with 3CX. There is a clear focus moving to those larger installs. So it's always been very well received in the SMB market, but looking at those 100 to 1,000 seat instances. The other focus is around the CRM. So we already have a lot of CRM integrations. We have a DIY option for CRM, but those are key focuses with new functions coming out to work with those smarter. So to cover off the key focus areas for version 20, the management console says Sayonara, um, and we welcome the admin console. Now, I know for a lot of people this is quite disconcerting, but to put that into perspective, the management console was a web browser page. The admin console is a web browser page things have moved around and they're meant to be more logical. For those of us that have been on the 3CX journey for a long time now, we're very familiar with where things are in the management console. And when we go looking in the admin console and they're in a slightly different place, we find that a little frustrating. 
it's taken me a little bit with testing and also using it on our V18 installation that we have for the company, um, but I am getting used to it and I can see the logic. So for new partners joining the 3CX family, there is a bit more logic to it, but you know, everybody's logic is slightly different. Another key enhancement with version 20 is that the groups that were introduced during version 18 and started to have some power during version 18 become much more powerful in version 20 as departments. This means that things that were once set at a system level or a SIP trunk level as well will now be set at a department level, which allows departments to have their own holidays, their own language, their own time zones, their own opening hours, all those types of things. So the departments become much more powerful. Coming to departments in the future are their own phone book the ability to be able to integrate a CRM per department, so you have a different CRM for sales and support, for example. So there's lots of things that are coming in the future that have been um, talked about in the blogs as we've been on this journey for the last six or seven months. The new native Windows soft phone, which is downloadable from the Microsoft Store, adds an additional layer of security. So everything is checked by Microsoft, um, and it's also going to eliminate the requirement for the desktop app. So we do expect to see the desktop app, which is the one based on the Electron code, um, to be deprecated during the next weeks, months, um, as people get used to the new Windows soft phone. Now, I know a lot of partners have the burning question as to whether there will be an installer for push, because not all staff members have access to the Microsoft Store. That is a question that I am still waiting for the answers on, and I have put that to 3CX and am waiting for, to hear back from them around it. So don't despair, we're out there advocating on behalf of you. The call manager in version 20, looks at new queue strategies, better integrations and call control, massive improvements to ring groups, um, transfer back on busy strategy, um, lots of things. And in turn, that leads to better reporting. So better reporting means that we can make adjustments to the system um, and be able to manipulate the data to give us what we need to get out of that system. So hang in there, the better reporting is coming and is a core focus. The latest Debian 12 is used for version 20. So for those of you that are Linux fans, um, you will understand that Debian 12 was released in July 2023. Um, version 18 is built on Debian 10. As you go through the upgrade pathway, you'll move from Debian 10 to Debian 11 to Debian 12, so there is no rollback. Debian 12, going straight there, gives a lot of future proofing for 3CX as well, um, and that's going to be fantastic for the future of the technology. There's also a new troubleshooting tool coming. Those intermittent issues at an extension level drive us all crazy. Um, agents or end users at the extension level will be able to actually initiate it and start the troubleshooting so that we can isolate where things are going wrong. That will help with those niggly, happens once a week, once a month, those kind of things. Just a quick look at the uh, version 20 admin console if you haven't already looked at it. Um, so it's just accessible from the web client. Um, so if you have the rights to access everything, so for me I'm a system owner obviously and I can get into everything, but you have different levels of access. Um, and you know, even little things like being able to change the name of the owner of the instance done from in the admin console. So we will get used to saying goodbye to the management console, but like anything, change can be a little bit painful. Feels like we're divorcing a friend that we've um, had for many, many years now. So there were some core things that initially were not going to make the version 20 release, and they were added in during release candidate three a few weeks ago, and have made the initial release of version 20. Those include the hot desking, which obviously is a really key feature with hybrid workers and the way we work today. Um, the FXS bridges or gateways are now supported. Um, decked base stations are configurable without any issues. And the Teams Direct routing is there 
as we know it in version 18. This is not the rework of the Teams Direct Routing. And when we look in the roadmap in a second, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But these features were expected in update one, but they made it to release candidate three and are part of the live version we have as of last night. So what is on the roadmap? What didn't make the initial release? They have been advising that the updated reporting and the scheduling of reporting would be coming in update one or two. They have released a little bit more detail with the version 20 launch about a product called Grafana, which will take that data and be able to manipulate it. I don't know a lot about Grafana myself. I haven't had a time to do a lot of um, Googling and checking on that, but more details will be coming. I do know that the um, staff at 3CX have been getting a bit of a first-hand look at it, and they're pretty blown away by what it is able to deliver with the data collected. There's an onboard video conferencing service, um, which will give you your highest security and confidentiality. There'll be some work on the wallboards and the switchboards in the future, um, potentially an outbound wallboard, which would be great, and being able to manipulate those wallboards. Uh, the receptionist view will come into the soft phone at some point soon. Now, for anybody that's been on the 3CX journey like I have, um, the legacy soft phone, or as uh, Nicholas Perez will refer to it, the cockroach, um, that just doesn't die. People love that drag and drop functionality. So drag and drop will come to the new Windows soft phone at some point soon. And I do believe that a Mac soft phone is also being planned. Uh, group SMS texting will come in. There'll be some multi-instance um, coming. Um, and then the rework of the Microsoft Teams integration. So this will be rebuilt in the future. Um, at the moment, what we have is the same as version 18, um, but they will be updating to the latest API, which will give more of that two-way communication that we now see in the CRMs, which will allow for things like presence and that. Just a reminder that if we go back to last year when um, and Nick Galea himself released the blog on the Microsoft Teams integration. The purpose of this is where a very small percentage of staff are using Microsoft Teams for calling, and the majority of staff are using 3CX. I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, so, and it's not designed for people to go, I'm going to make a call using my 3CX app and I'm going to make a call for my Teams app, the next one, and vice versa. It's a bit of an all or nothing, but we will see more detail when that has been released. Just a few key reminders. Version 18 update 9 is the current version for version 18. And you need to be on update 9 to be able to move up to version 20. Now, a reminder that the release that has occurred with version 20 is the Linux version only. So at this point, it is only for those on Linux. Before upgrading, you must have a system owner. The system owner was introduced in update 6, which was back in March 2023, so almost 12 months ago. Um, so that's essential. Um, there's been some updates to the VoIP um, provider templates in update 9, and as we talked about, the migration of Debian will occur. Before you do any upgrades, A, you should be testing on your own systems um, so that you're familiar with it to support your customers, but refer back to the version 20 upgrade checklist blog that was released on the 10th of January. There is also a webinar recording from Nicholas Perez, who is the 3CX global trainer, walking through the upgrade checklist. The link's in our February newsletter, or you can reach out to us and we'll send you that link. Um, it's a really good watch. It's about 48 minutes, I think, from memory. Um, the actual live webinar was two hours because there were a lot of questions, but this is just a recording of the actual information. Well, well worth a watch. Auto updates to Linux. So the major release you will need to trigger. Um, we had a few minor issues between 16 and 18, but um, as I understand it, um, you will need to trigger that major release upgrade. The updates will install as per your schedule for auto updates. Now, on to our friend, the 3CX standard for simultaneous call free licenses. These are the old licenses that were free, are end of life, but are still working. If 
they have been registered correctly to the end customer email, they have now been extended from the 2nd of March 2024 to the 2nd of July 2024 for the expiry date. There will be one final extension to the end of 2024, which will be triggered before the 2nd of July. So I don't have a date, but it will be triggered before then. Um, and that will be for those that are registered correctly. So it must be the end user's domain and have upgraded to version 20. So now that version 20 is live, um, the expectation is that those free licenses will be migrated up to version 20. You need to start planning for the migrations of your customers because that is the final extension. You need to make a decision about where you're going. So you can move your customers up to a paid license, so the Pro or Enterprise for simultaneous call license. Now, one thing that has been announced overnight with version 20 is that the Windows installations, which there aren't that many, most people deploy on Linux now, um, will need to move to an enterprise license, not the pro license. Or they, of course, could migrate to Linux. So, you know, back up and restore and to a Linux. So back up from Windows and restore into a Linux installation. The other option available for those customers on the free licenses is to move to the new licensing model. So it started life as a product called Startup, and it, I know people are still getting used to the naming conventions, but they have a 3CX free for up to 10 users and a 3CX SMB for up to 10 or up to 20 users. Now, there are some specific restrictions with that product. They are designed for very small businesses. You have to use specific SIP that is able to offer those particular services. Um, for New Zealand, we'd recommend you reach out and speak with our friends at Uphone. Um, and you're restricted to one SIP line and three IP phones on the free one. So if that's not gonna cut it for your customers, you need to be talking to them about a paid upgrade to the dedicated licenses. So most licenses are deployed on Linux, but if they're on Windows, that's something to think about, and that is also something announced in the version 20 update. So just to cover that off, um, as I have read it and as I understand it, is that users that are on a Windows installation, when they upgrade to version 20, if they are on a pro license, their pro license will be free of charge upgraded to an enterprise license till the end of their licensing term. At the end of their licensing term, they would need to renew that license as enterprise. If they want to go back to the pro or stay on pro, they'd need to migrate across to Linux. Perpetual licenses for 3CX have been end of life since 2022. So that's the older style where you buy a license and then you buy your maintenance each year. During 2023, 3CX announced that the perpetual licenses would not be upgradable to version 20 and that they would start converting those to annual subscriptions. That will continue. There is no perpetual licenses moving forward. Um, the renewal dates will be the same date as your perpetual license was due to expire. If you have customers on perpetual licenses on older builds without maintenance, you need to think about what you're going to do for them because A, they cannot connect to the 3CX activation server, but B, they have no further options for conversion, etc. So we will need to work with you if you have any of those hanging out there. So please do get in contact. Um, 3CX has already sent out emails and notifications of that conversion process to the system owner email of that address or the owner's email of the instance. So keeping up to date. So technical trainings, there were new certification exams for basic and advanced released right at the end of 2023. Um, and we've had the new materials for checking um, that you know everything before you get ready to sit your exams. But there will be some further updates now with version 20 being launched. So we're just waiting on a time frame, and I hope to have that information very soon and we'll share that out to you. The other thing is to stay up to date. So we sent out our UC channel update newsletter just recently. If you didn't get a copy, reach out. We can help you with that or it is on our company blog page. Um, that 
is a wrap up of what you need to know. The weekly newsletter in the event section, you'll see any upcoming events. Plus, like next week, there'll be a big thing about version 20 because it's a major update. But normally, everything's held back for that UC channel update. You've also got access to our LinkedIn Blue Chip UC community group. This is a closed group. I guard this group very, very carefully. Um, so that's where I'll post anything that happens first. So first thing this morning, that's where I was posting it. Tried to post it from my phone at about 6.30 this morning, but for whatever reason, my phone decided it didn't want to do it. Um, so it got updated just after 8.30 this morning with the version 20 launch. And that brings us to the end of our bite size webinar. I think I've stuck to the bite size format. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has now um, and try to. So feel free to throw those into the Q&A. It was definitely a shirt, Graham, I promise. Um, Is the new soft phone going to be able to control a desk phone in the future? I'm still waiting for an answer on that, Graham. I believe it will because it will be replacing the desktop app um, and it will be replacing the legacy um, soft phone app as well. But I don't believe it's there yet. Um, I haven't got the latest um, build of that. It went to release candidate two about a week and a half ago. Um, so I need to have a look at that latest build and just see where we're at um, on that. Let me just keep scrolling. Ah, uh, the holidays. Yes, the holiday recordings is a hot topic on the forum. Um, so as you've seen, Brendan, there is a lot of conversation going on about that. We're also advocating around that. Um, I understand a lot of it's to do with obviously the departments and being able to set different holiday messages per department. So if you have, you know, five out of six departments that are on annual leave for two weeks, um, but one department's working through, you don't want a message on that department saying we're not here for two weeks kind of thing. So we're still waiting for some more updates around that. And I believe the forum is a pretty hot topic on that, but we will keep an eye on that. And when we get any concrete information, we will share that out. Um, but yes, that has been a hot topic for a number of our partners. I'll give everybody a second for any more questions. Um, we will be having a version 20 webinar, um, sort of more of a launch webinar, um, probably in a couple of weeks. Next week, I will send out a fairly detailed email with version 20 information to our vendor watch list. And we'll have an update in our weekly newsletter. And then the following week, I think we'll run a slightly longer format um, webinar um, around version 20. Now, just remember that uh, 3CX did indicate a four to six month transition process. Um, nobody is expecting everybody to go out today and upgrade to version 20 immediately. It's really important that you are prepared and ready. You've read the checklist, you've tested it on your own beta systems, those types of things. So do be prepared for that rather than uh, rushing in and um, regretting things later. So um, yeah, really important. Now it doesn't look like we've got any more questions coming in, but if you do have any burning questions, just reach out to us on uc at bluechipit.co.nz. If you've still got the soft soul email address saved for any reason, it will get through to us. It is on permanent divert. Um, or you can reach out to me directly, of course, as well. Um, but we're more than happy to assist via email, phone, whatever you need to um, help you as we go through this process. So nothing more to do but from say thank you very much for joining us today. There's no last minute questions coming in. Um, have a great rest of the day. We appreciate your attendance. We'll pop the recording out to you tomorrow um, and we'll be in touch with more Vision 20 information very soon. Thanks everybody.